I know many of you, like me, enjoyed reading William R. Forstner's novel, One Second After. This book dealt with an EMP, and that's an electromagnetic pulse, attack on the U.S. and the devastating consequences. An EMP could be a man-made, far-reaching event caused by a nuclear bomb exploding at a high altitude, or it could be a very localized, natural occurring event caused by a lightning strike. Definitely, the nuclear bomb exploding at a high altitude is much worse. In either case, electronic devices could be disrupted or damaged. Experts disagree on the effects of a man-made EMP on our power infrastructure, vehicles, and electronic gadgets. And I hope we will never have to find out who is right in this case. Many of you might also have read an article in the Washington Post in July of this year entitled, How a Solar Storm Two Years Ago Nearly Caused a Catastrophe on Earth. Now a CME, coronal mass ejection, is a cloud of plasma that travels at high speed and is still attached to the magnetic field of the sun. If it is earth directed and hits the earth's magnetic shields, radio and power disruptions can occur. According to this article, quote, a CME double whammy of this potency striking Earth would likely cripple satellite communications and could severely damage the power grid. NASA offers this sobering assessment. Analysts believe that a direct hit could cause widespread power blackouts, disabling everything that plugs into a wall socket. Most people wouldn't even be able to flush their toilet because Urban water supplies largely rely on electric pumps. Well, we would have little or no warning of an EMP, but would have a one to three day warning of a CME. Now, a Faraday cage is a conductive structure that shields against electromagnetic energy. For a CME, the best bet is to unplug all devices to protect from solar storm power surges. A Faraday cage is not needed in this case. However, a Faraday cage may protect your electronics in case of an EMP. There are many instructions on the internet how to construct your personal Faraday cage from using a metal trash can to an elaborate galvanized underground steel bunker. At work last week, our microwave died. Rather than throw the trash, I brought it home to store some of my electronic gear. You see, a microwave is a Faraday cage. It generates a strong electric field inside, but outside it is a zero magnetic field. This oven seems to be intact. Okay, now we will do the classic cell phone test. I told my son I needed his phone to put in the microwave, and for some reason he was unwilling to give it to me. So I'm using my husband's phone. Place my husband's cell phone in our oven. Let's see if it gets a call. Dialing. It's starting to ring on my phone. Hmm. Oh, there it is finally ringing on his phone. Quite a delay though, wasn't it? And yes, he is a big Michigan State fan. Now let's try that same experiment by putting in this junk microwave. Dialing. Okay, it's ringing on my phone. And now it has went to my husband's voicemail. It did not go through. Okay, we'll now try putting a radio in. Very loud. So all I'm getting from here is static. Let's open the door. No, it's fine.
So do I think the tests that I just performed prove that this microwave will be an excellent Faraday cage in case of an EMP and protect my electronic equipment? I'm not really sure. Um, maybe. And it would also depend, I think, on the how far I was from the detonation from the EMP and the strength of the detonation. A lot of different items. I really think the likelihood of an EMP is pretty slim. More chance for CME, I believe. If you watch my channel regularly, you know that I am more of a moderate prepper. Uh, I'm really not here for the apocalypse. <laughs> so, do I think everybody needs a Faraday cage? No, not really. I don't think so. Um, in this case, it was free, so I couldn't resist. Will I actually keep my electronic gadgets in here? I don't know. I think it's going to depend on how much room this takes up in my prepping area. Because uh, I really think the likelihood of needing a Faraday cage is pretty slim. But hey, I'd love to hear what you think. Do you have a Faraday cage? If so, what are you using for the cage? And what are you putting in your cage? And why do you think it's necessary? Barbara Polperi saying subscribe and share the knowledge. And thank you so much for watching.